Hi everyone, Ford here from Son of a Stitch, and this is Nugget the Adventure Parakeet. We're both aficionados of modern cross-stitching, which is a hobby that's been experiencing a bit of a renaissance over the last few years. A lot of people have been picking it up after having not touched it since childhood, or a lot of new people discovering the hobby. And as with anything that becomes popular like that, there's usually going to be a bunch of people who want to try to capitalize on that and make some money off of it. And of course, most of them are going to be unscrupulous people. So there's been a proliferation of a lot of uh, shops selling cross-stitch patterns online since PDF distribution has made that so cheap and easy. And uh, it's a little difficult for a lot of people to tell what's a good pattern and what's a bad pattern. So Nugget and I are here today with some tips and tricks to help you avoid getting screwed when buying patterns online. Alright, so I'm going to teach you five things to look for to help you determine whether or not a pattern that you're interested in or a seller that you're thinking of buying a pattern from is a quality product. Number one, and the most important thing you're going to look for is finish photos. You want to make sure that there are photos of actual finis finished stitches of the pattern that you're looking for, or at least of most of the patterns that the seller has. A lot of unscrupulous sellers will just output these digital patterns without ever having bothered to test them and if they haven't checked that the floss colors are accurate or that the similar colors have been combined together you're going to wind up with a pattern that is not only really difficult to stitch but also one that's not going to look as good when you're finished. The second thing that we're going to look at is the seller's reviews. Now, there's some oddities about the way Etsy does business, especially when it comes to cross-stitch patterns. That means you need to look for some specific things beyond just whether or not they have a positive review rating. Uh, some sellers will actually buy their own patterns in order to be able to write themselves reviews because they pay a fairly small fee to Etsy every time they sell one. Um, and Etsy only allows you to write a review for a product that you've purchased within 100 days. A lot of people will buy a couple of years worth of patterns all at once. So by the time they actually get around to stitching it, then it's too late to go and write or to change their review. Even if you look at the reviews of my shop on Etsy, you'll notice that a lot of the reviews say pattern looks good, haven't gotten a chance to stitch it yet or something like that. So they've only looked at the pattern, they haven't actually done it, so they don't know what the finished product is going to look like. So what you want to look for in the reviews is actually pictures of finishes. Uh, if there are a lot of legitimate sales and if people are actually stitching them before they write their reviews, you'll see a fair number of reviews that have pictures attached to them. And you can look at those to see how they're actually going to turn out. The next thing that you're going to want to look for is to examine the shop itself. Go click on the name of the shop and it'll take you to the shop and show you all of the patterns that they have available. Take a look at what they offer there. Uh, a lot of these fly-by-night sellers will just open a shop and then post a whole bunch of stuff until Etsy shuts them down. So they'll frequently have only been open for a little while but then have a whole bunch of patterns. If the shop's only been open for six months and they have 1,100 or 1,200 patterns, uh, and if the style of those patterns varies wildly, you're, it's usually going to be a pretty good sign that that shop is operating unscrupulously. You'll see a bunch of unlicensed Disney stuff, for instance, because they don't care about copyright strikes because they just plan to reopen as soon as they get shut down. Uh, you can also investigate the shop a little bit further by looking for their name on social media. Uh, I can tell you from firsthand experience that most small independent cross-stitch pattern designers, they're out there hustling their asses off to try to sell these patterns. That means they're going to have a Facebook page, they're going to have an Instagram account, they may have registered a Pinterest board, or they may have a Twitter account to help them promote that. So go and take a look at those as well and check and see if they have legitimate followers, check and see if they have pictures of finishes or of works in progress of those pieces. So doing a little bit of investigating can help you discover whether or not this is a legit small business or whether this is another unscrupulous operator trying to capitalize on the booming cross-stitch market. The next thing that you're going to want to look at is actually a little bit of detail of the pattern itself. So if you take a look at the pictures that have been posted, uh, a lot of times it's hard to tell whether or not it's a legit finish or a render, um, but if the 
finish is a little bit too perfect and the lighting is just a little bit too perfect, it's probably just a render. You'll also notice things like uh, you'll look at the description of it and it'll tell you the size of the pattern and it'll tell you that it's 13 inches by 14 inches when finished or something like that, for instance. Which, for one thing, that's a very big cross stitch and unless you're looking specifically for a huge pattern, um, that's in fact a warning sign if it's too big. Um, you'll also want to see if the size that it describes matches the way it's been rendered. You'll frequently see things that are finish out to 12 or 14 inches that the picture of it has been put into a 7 inch embroidery hoop to make it look more manageable and something you can realistically finish. So compare the relative size of the finish itself with the size of the finish in the picture and pay attention to, to what kind of frame it's in. Um, a lot of uh, sloppy designers or people who are just converting images into cross stitch patterns without doing any actual designing don't pay attention to frame sizes and don't pay attention to frame shapes. So if you look at that pattern and you'll notice that the frame is actually like really long and short or if it's really tall and narrow it doesn't match an actual standard frame size. Uh, for one thing it tells you that they haven't really put the care into it to make sure that it's going to fit into a normal frame. The other thing is that once you finish it you're going to have to pay for a custom frame and that's going to radically increase the cost of your project. So take, in, take that into account and look at that and look at their other patterns too. If they're consistently making that mistake, it's probably because they're not uh, taking care with those patterns. And the last thing I'm going to tell you to look at, which is another part of the project itself, is a little bit more complicated and harder to spot. If you take a close look at the pattern pictures or at the renders, or even if there are finished photos, at the finished photos of it, and if you look closely at the edges, especially along high contrast edges within the frame, uh, you'll look for what we call aliasing or artifacting. Uh, and I'll show you a couple of examples here. So if you look at the high contrast edges on this one, you'll see that where we should have a bright spot up against a dark spot, some of that crosses over into the pixel during the conversion, and instead of a bright pixel next to a dark pixel, we get a gray pixel in between, which looks fine in the render, but once you actually go to stitch that, that's going to add dozens of unnecessary extraneous stitches with just a tiny amount of it in the pattern. It's going to increase your expense, it's going to increase your time, it's going to increase your frustration, and it's not going to actually look as good once it's finished as it does in the digital render. So here's another example of that right here. All right, those are my tips and tricks for avoiding getting screwed when buying digital cross-stitch patterns online. Uh, thanks for joining me for this episode of Son of a Stitch. Of course, you can find me on all of my other online presences, Facebook, Son of a Stitch XS, Instagram, Son of a Stitch, of course, my store, sonofastitch.etsy.com, or join me over on my Patreon for free patterns, advanced notice of cross-stitch stitch-alongs, and a bunch of other secret inside goodies that are available only to patrons. That's at patreon.com slash sonofastitch. Thanks again for joining me, and happy stitching, I guess, he said lamely. What do you think, Nugget? You pooped on me again. <laughs>